What is up, players? It is Warboss Tay back up in this mug. Welcome to a tutorial. This is how to paint t t <laughs> the red wake. What? No. Um. Why did it? Why did it say that? Tiberos. It should be Tiberos. Oh my goodness. I don't know. Did I think the lady boss got into this when I was in the shower or something? Um. Okay. This is what it's gonna look like at the end of this video. That's so funny. I just saw that. He's uh, got his washes down and they're drying, so he's gonna look a little bit shiny right now, but uh, this is about a day later when I'm recording this voiceover, so he looks uh, a lot cleaner and more matte. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of great uh, detailing with the gold there and uh, eye-catching colors. So speaking of the gold, you're gonna be using your Retributor Armor. Fantastic color from Games Workshop. I, I really loved Balthazar gold when it came out, but that uh, retributor is really great. Rackarth Flesh is going to be for your skulls there hanging off of his waist. You've got Lead Belcher because there are some, some metallic silvery bits. We are also going to be using Administratum Grey. That's mainly for the bottom half of his helmet, give it that uh, great white shark lightness to it. Then you've got Corn Red for his chest plate. He's got a little bit of a a uh, skull and a star with some lightning bolts. The lightning bolts are going to be Averlin Sunset. And um, I think I just realized at this point that you're also going to need Nuln Oil, obviously. And we are going to be painting the darker armor plates with a mixture of Eshin Grey and Abaddon Black. So you're going to need those two colors as well. Yeah, really pleased with how he's turning out. I used some cork for his base. That is uh, not actually how he comes in the pack. It's just the model. You just put him on the uh, the base, but I decided to mount him on some cork and put a little bit of uh, sand there at the bottom to give him a little bit of an interesting base. And I painted that up in that kind of brownish ocean floor coral kind of look. So the first thing I did was after I cleaned the model, built him up, put him on that base, I sprayed him with Mechanica Standard Gray Primer. And uh, an even coat of that, you you have to make sure you clean your resin pieces. It's not like a Games Workshop plastic where you can just, um, you know, assemble it and start, start uh, spray priming. You really need to wash all of those resin pieces. Otherwise that release mold release agent is going to stick on it and it's going to be really oily and nothing nothing is going to stick and uh, I've got some horror stories about some Forge World pieces that I tried to paint I tried to prime and uh, the paint just wouldn't stick on it. it it was just absolutely terrible so clean your Forge World pieces before you start painting them and you should be great I decided to go with Retributor Armor Gray first after the Mechanica Standard Gray base coat because um, it's the most eye-catching pieces on the model Carcaridon's color scheme is a lot of different shades of gray, finding the variation in the different gray tones. So um, I wanted to make sure we get all of the other more interesting bits out of the way first. That way the model looks more uh, dynamic, interesting to look at, more colorful. And then we can really focus on making those gray details have some kind of variety to them. Now, I'm using the model painted up by the Forge World design team as a base. So I just looked up uh, Forge World. See, I don't even remember the guy. I'm pretty sure it's Tiberos. Tiberos. The Red Wake. And I just googled that and I found the Forge World site with all the pictures and um, it's really great because they showed you they show you a front, a back, uh, some side detail shots. So I was really able to see what colors they used everywhere on the model. And for this commission, I wanted to really stick true to the uh, original Forge World colors. So that means all of the rims, the edging, are um, all of those bits, the uh, little studs in the legs and the shoulders, they're gonna get gold. And um, I'm also gonna be painting some gold into the uh, chain fist, the chain sword part of the chain fist is gonna get a nice bit of retributor armor as well.
So it's been a while since I've uh, filmed and been able to really do anything other than just paint. I've been painting like a madman and uh, building and assembling these carcaridons, trying to get everything ready for my client. And um, I'm just so excited to be able to share this with you guys because it's been, I know it's been a long while and I'm sure not that many of you watching this video are going to have this model. Hopefully you just put this video on to play in the background while you're working. And um, if I can share with you some tips on achieving the uh, finished products that I like, then uh, I hope that helps you to broaden your skill set as well. I think I realized when I was watching tutorial videos a long time ago from uh, Girl Painting was the big one, and then of course there was uh, Awesome Paint Job. I realized like I, I don't have 99% of the models that they were painting. I just wanted to watch their videos to get a feel for how they work and you know how they thin their paints, how they applied the colors, how they went about um, just deciding what to paint in, in which color and how to compose a model. The colors on a model, the way you compose them, I think is one of the most uh, tell telling features to separate a beginner painter from someone who's been doing it for a long time. and uh, Or maybe you're a beginner painter but you're just really artistic and you're good at color composition and you can tell when you're looking at a model, oh this, these pieces should have a little pop, I'm gonna put the gold here, I'm gonna put it here. But I, I remember when I first started I was terrible. When I look back at my first models that I ever painted, it's like a horror show. <laughs> So it's um, going to be taking me a little while because I'm still trying to remember how to hold the brush, how to um, apply it just so so that the gold flakes don't go everywhere. I've been so busy in, in my real life outside of the hobby that uh, I, I haven't had much time to keep my painting skills up to snuff. So uh, this tutorial was also a good chance for me to um, you know, dip my toes back into the, the pool of of working and um, yeah getting getting some paint on some models that's what it's all about right oh my gosh isn't that why we're just all a part of this community we have <laughs> we have these drawers and drawers of models that uh, might not even be out of their boxes yet and uh, we just are trying to trying to grind through them so hey if you're in the uh, midnight grind session or mid-afternoon grind session or you're painting something right now because you've got a couple of minutes of free time on your own, then uh, thanks for putting me on and uh, for playing me in your background. I'm, I'm glad that my videos are a source of, I guess, I don't want to say companionship because I'm not really, you know, we're not really hanging out, but I'm glad they're a source of background noise and a little bit of that creative, inspirational uh, encouragement to get you working. I guess while I'm working on these studs, while I'm working on these studs, I should uh, tell you that the uh, cork that I use for my bases is basically a cork board you can get from any arts and crafts store for three or four bucks and um, you get so much. I don't think I'll ever run out because I'm only using small bits that I just broke off the edges and then using just my fingers I ripped random patterns out of them. And I glued them to the base using Elmer's glue I'm not sure if I, I if if I could also use super glue. If anybody knows out there, that'd be a, a, a real help for me. Gluing this kind of I don't know if it's rubber, but this cork to a plastic base. I used Elmer's glue, white glue, white PVA glue. I think it's fine. Um, and then I just put the uh, sand on top of it. He's also got some studs on his head, his helmet. And um, one part that I know I missed when I was first plotting out this model was he's got some gold edging on his armor right there behind his helmet. So we want to make sure we get that as well. I guess it's called banding, right? That gold um, trim on the armor banding. The thing I love about Retributor armor is it is so yellow of a gold. It's, it's this nice bright yellow as opposed to Baltazar gold, which is a little bit more of a red, like a brassy gold. Yeah, it looks great. 
So now I'm uh, moving on to the weapons. I love how, oh my gosh, this is, Forge World is so brilliant. They made his Lightning Claw, Chain Fist combo. The Lightning Claws look like a mix of a harpoon and just the silhouette of a shark. You can see like the shark head, the shark fins, and they just look like nasty harpoons, like tridents. And I just think that's such a great design choice. And then to put him, to have those lightning claws on the back of his gauntlets and to also have chain swords at the bottom is just insane. So there's a little bit of a, a piece, a, I think it's either a mount or or like an extension of his his gauntlet, his his uh, gloves on the inside. That's when I'm painting retributor armor, and then I'm also painting the casing of the chain swords in his chain fist. I think I mentioned that before. Add Ministratum Gray. We're going straight to the brightest of the light gray colors, and this is going to go straight on the bottom part of the helmet. One of the things I love about Carcharodons is that they have that two-toned helmet. You don't see that very much. In fact, I can't think of any any other chapter off the top of my head or Legion that has this two-tone helmet kind of effect where the visor, the forehead, the top part of the helmet is one color and um, the part under the eye lenses, the face grill, all of that is a separate color. And it, like I said, it really evokes that shark head silhouette. Now the Administratum Gray is, um, I think if I could do this over again, it's a little bit thin as a paint. Even after I shook it up, got all the pigments mixed together, it's uh, it's great, but it's a little watery, it's a little thin, it's kind of creeping into the cracks of his uh, grill on either side, his, his gills, I guess, and uh, if I could go back, I would probably use Celestra Gray, which is just as bright, but a little bit thicker since it's a base paint, and will give you even better coverage. So at this point, we're not going to be using too much of that lighter gray color. That's going to be all for now. We're going to move straight on to the skulls hanging from his waist with Rackhearth flesh. So this is what I mean about a very thick and uh, just beautiful base paint that covers really well. It goes on so smooth. You don't want it to be too thick. You don't want to just, you know, slather the piece with this paint. But if you can take some of that paint out of your paint pot and thin it out on the side, mix it maybe with like a little drop of water so that it's, it flows a little bit smoothly, then um, just apply that directly onto the model and you should get really, really good coverage. I think I, I, I might have mentioned this on some other videos. Rackarth Flesh, one of my favorite paints. It, um, it's, I, I still don't think it's a match for the old Deneb Stone. I think that might always be my favorite um, Games Workshop paint ever. Deneb Stone and... Oh, what was that other one? Caradon Granite. Those are, those are just terrific paints. But um, Rackarth Flesh is definitely up there. Now, it's, it's a lot more varied in its use. You can use it for bones, you can use it for parchment, you can use it as a highlight color to add to any other base color and it'll go on really well. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint on our Abaddon Black and uh, this is going to go... why did I use Abaddon Black for? I think I initially used it for the eye lens. We want our Carcharodons to look um, like soulless, heartless, void monsters. So, uh, oh yeah, I'm also going to be painting the uh, ribbing or the joints of the armor. For Terminators and for Space Marines in general, you're going to see this uh, in your models. It's at every single joint, the hip joints especially, behind the knees, the elbows, the hands. It's kind of like this ribbed looking uh, feature of the armor that gives the pieces mobility. It's uh, kind of there to, yeah, like I said, get, allow your, your models to have functional movement. And uh, I like to paint them in different colors, usually black, but sometimes I'll paint them in silver. 
And it, like, it just depends. Because we're using a lot of grays on our model, I didn't want to use silver. I decided to go with black. And at this point, I'm just looking for uh, different areas to paint, different joints. That's one of those things that uh, I don't really notice uh, when I'm working on a model, but when I finish a model and I'm looking at it, if, if I realize I missed that, that ribbing in between the joints, it just kind of irks me. It's one of those little details that I kind of pride myself on, on working on, on painting. And um, if I miss it, then it just kind of bugs me. So uh, always go for the details. The, the devil is in the details, and um, everyone is going to be a lot more, I guess, pleased if you get them all right. So going back to our retributor armor, I'm, yeah, I think I, I noticed in the picture that the casing for the chain swords is gold. And I think that's great because it really draws your eye to it. There's so much gray and silver going on over there that uh, without that pop of gold, it's going to be hard to see just how amazing <laughs> his weapons are. The more I read about the Carcharodons and their you know, combat doctrine, their whole philosophy of uh, fast lightning, uh, brutal lightning fast assaults and uh, just ruthless getting in there and just ripping it up I, I think it's it's a really cool chapter and uh, hey with 8th edition coming that's uh, that's right around the corner at the time of this filming um, it's you know it's one of those things that a lot of people are looking at new armies to paint or new armies to work on and expand and who knows, once this commission is over, I might just get a little support force of, of Carcharodons in my own collection. So I decided to paint this piping behind the Chain Fist Lightning Claws in Lead Belcher, but for my other Terminators, I've got it painted black, so I might switch it over in between videos once I'm done uploading this. Uh, in, in the Forge World video, the reason why I'm painting it silver in the first place is because they've got their uh, Tiburos with uh, silver piping here, but I, I kind of want him to match the rest of the Terminators I've already painted, and I don't know why, I usually paint this part uh, black to kind of um, just make it a little bit more of a toned down uh, color combo with with that silver catching the eye and reflecting and being a little glittery it's uh, not as uh, interesting I think you also gotta paint the chain I almost forgot there's some chains hanging these skulls to his hip so we want to make sure we paint that and of course the teeth on the chain swords as well as the uh, harpoons themselves lead belcher is such a fantastic silver paint. It makes me uh, think that it's, you know, it's a great spiritual successor to the old bolt gun metal. It's a thick silver paint. It goes on real smooth. And uh, it's funny because I tried working with the Iron Breaker and it's not Chainmail, what's the new, uh, the new mid-tone between Iron Breaker and Rune Fang Steel. I tried using the uh, layer silver paints from Games Workshop and they, they don't seem to work as well as uh, Lead Belcher. And even Rune Fang Steel as a layer paint, it, it works really, really well. So that's that Shark Silhouette Harpoon Lightning Claws we're getting now. If you make any mistake, I think I've mentioned this in a number of my videos, but anytime you make a mistake, don't let it discourage you. All you have to do is go back over it with the previous color, tidy it up, we call it, and um, you know, keep moving forward. A lot of times, uh, perfectionists such as myself, and I'm sure a lot of other artists out there, will feel the need to uh, 
keep fixing and make you make like one small step forward and then you take two small steps back because you realize oh I messed up I can clean up the lines here and then you find something else that you want to change or, or tidy up and uh, that's why we have so many unpainted miniatures so um, you know fix within reason do what you can but keep moving forward you always want to keep keep going forward and then if you want you can take the time at the end of the project to come back and fix those tiny mistakes but at the beginning uh, you, you do want to fix the big ones if there's like a lot of paint because you remember you're gonna have to shade and highlight next so you don't want too much mistakes too many mistakes um, giving you more work to do in the cleanup phase but overall tiny little flubs here and there can be can always be fixed in post All right, now we're getting on to that shark silhouetted harpoon lightning claw. And uh, again, what a great design aesthetic for the Carcharodons, the space sharks, to have these lightning claws that both look like they're in the shape of a, a shark in the water with the fin and the pointed nose, as well as uh, an old nautical harpoon. And to have three of those on each, each power fist, I think, is really, really fun. It's terrific. It's, it's, uh, just so symbolic of the Carcharodons as a chapter, and I love it. I think when Forge World has the uh, chance to, like, that's the difference, I think, between Forge World and, and Games Workshop, is that you don't see the uh, sculpted shoulder pads or the detailed iconography. There's not lots of little shark fin motifs or shark, um, you know, shark shapes on on the model like it's not like a blood angels or a space wolf where it, it's just positively dripping with uh, winged blood drops or blood vials or uh, wolf tails and totems i think forge world artists have a really firm grasp of you know what they want and not going overboard with it they knew that they were making a special character for the Carcharodon space marines and instead of adding you know like a shark fin down the back of his terminator armor or uh, you know anything like that they just kind of alluded to it they kind of nodded to it by making his lightning claws look like a very nautical and uh, shark shark looking silhouette I like to paint these little um, little bits and pieces on the model silver in lead belcher because it uh, allows me to kind of pick out some details. It gives the eye something interesting to look at. If you're going to be looking at a model that's predominantly gray, different shades of gray and black and white, uh, you want a little bit of a pop. The gold does that really well and the silver does that also. So now I'm working on just touching up the teeth of the chain, chain fists there and uh, getting on to some last little bits before we get into I think the next thing that I wanted to do was the shoulder pad I know the last thing we're going to do is wash some people like to wash their models in sections after their base coats I like to go all at one time so a little bit more retributor armor I forgot there's a little bit of banding there on the sides of the what I'm called the hip pads I think for a special character, some banding, even if it's not on the model, I think it's really helpful to distinguish them. If I was going to be painting a regular space marine, but I wanted to make them like a sergeant, then I think you've seen before that I've, I've done for my ultramarines, how to paint an ultramarines video. I did a little bit of banding around the hip pads and around um, like the leg armor. When you use gold as a uh, as an accent color it really helps if you frame different pieces of the model like the uh, the hip armor or uh, the arms or the shoulder pads as we're moving on to the last bits and sections of the model we get to work on the fine detailing and uh, this is really uh, important with Tiberos's chest insignia it's a lot different it's not a, a wing a winged angel or it's not 
uh, I mean, angel wings, right? It's not a uh, skull and crossbones. It's a white or bone colored skull in a uh, red starburst with a yellow, uh, yellow dual lightning bolts. And for those of you who are not familiar with Warhammer 40k, the lightning bolt was a symbol of unification. In the uh, 30k universe, the Emperor of Mankind decided that he was going to reunite all of the human worlds across the entire galaxy, and uh, it was going to be a great crusade that he was going to lead, and his symbol was a uh, usually like an, an eagle gripping two lightning bolts or twin lightning bolts. And um, so the fact that I saw it here on this model, I thought was very interesting because it's not, you don't see the lightning bolts on the front of the armor anymore. It goes to, uh, it kind of alludes to the fact that Tiberos and the Carcharodons, they have a lot of the older marks of armor. I think this is supposed to be Mark IV or Mark V Terminator armor. As you can tell from the helmet, it's a little bit different from the newer styles of helmet. It's got more of a, what I like to call like a praying mantis or a bug-like shape. And uh, I'm sorry, as I'm doing all, I'm saying all this, what I'm doing in the background is I'm mixing in my Eshin Gray and my Abaddon Black. Vallejo is a really great paint company in that it makes some terrific shades of grays and, bl and blacks and dark grays and light grays. Games Workshop doesn't have as much of a variety, so what I wanted to do to create a darker, like a, a halfway point between Eshin Gray, which I think is their darkest gray, and Abaddon Black was uh, by mixing the two together and creating this nice, beautiful color to separate the lightness of the Mechanicus Standard Gray and the Administratum Gray on the helmet from the rest of the model. And we don't want it to be black. We've already got black in the rib sections and in the joints, if you remember from earlier. If you Google any Carcharodons, Warhammer 40k, Space Marine uh, images, you'll notice that sometimes they go with a straight black for the shoulder pad. I didn't want to go that dark, but uh, I, I really wanted to make it darker than uh, the grays that Games Workshop has already. So, uh, like I said, we don't want to paint huge bits of armor with this gray. This dark gray is really a spot color. So I'm going to be putting it on the shoulder pad where we're going to be putting our shark insignia. And I'm going to be putting it on the hip pads. If you want, you could also paint it on the, I think on... Uh, one of my test models, I actually painted the uh, bottom of the leg armor with this dark gray. And um, in some of my Terminator models, I think I also went with this darker gray on the um, the lower leg armor. But for, for our guy here, we're going to be just putting it onto the right shoulder pad and the hip, the hip pads. Now it's time for a little touch-up. On the skulls, we've got Rackhearth Flesh, just kind of uh, creating a little bit more of that smooth bone color. Also, we're going to be taking our Rackhearth Flesh, and we're just very lightly painting the skull at the center of the chest insignia here. You really want to be careful whenever you're painting something that is small and detailed. This skull in the center of the chest plate here has... Uh, indentations for the eye sockets. It has very pronounced cheekbones, so I don't want to load down my paintbrush with a lot of paint. I want to just have it right on the tip of my paintbrush so that I can very smoothly apply it from an angle. If you can see where my hands are, I'm kind of holding it at an angle, and uh, like I said, I'm not slapping the paint on. I'm being very careful about just brushing it from different angles so that it gets the paint on uh, no matter where you look at it. And it's been a little bit of time now. I've let most of the paint dry when I'm coming back to do this part. And I've got my lead belcher. We're going to be very carefully painting the... I didn't realize this when I was looking at the model from the top down, but when I started turning the model around to check my progress, I saw all these exposed wires and cables and uh, uh, tubing on the side. Tubers. So I'm painting that in my lead belcher. I've also taken to, I've also started doing this. I'm not sure how many of you other Space Marines players do this, but there are these 
um, joints on the sides of the legs and the elbows. And so I like to paint that in lead belcher, a nice silver uh, to pop at the side of the legs shows the viewer that, you know, we're taking time to really get all the details. I'm not sure if I also pointed out that I like to paint the uh, little mouth sprockets right by his chin in uh, lead belcher as well. This is such a fantastic model. I love that Forge World is so um, so committed to offering resin, uh, really fine, nicely cast, expertly cast models, really beautiful models in resin. Their Space Marine Light, like their newer stuff, is just absolutely beautiful. Avalanche Sunset now for the twin lightning bolts. And uh, when you consider that Tiburos the Red Wake here, the Minotaurs, everything they did for the Badab War, and like four or five years ago, back in 2010 and 11, that was just a precursor to all of the Mark III, Mark IV, all of the Horus Heresy stuff that came out. And to think that they really uh, had this vision of, let's go back and let's explore the older marks of armor, I'm, I'm really glad that Games Workshop gave them the go-ahead and that they had the, uh, had the courage and the confidence to delve into the miniatures side of the Horus Heresy because the books had been released by Black Library for a long time. And uh, you know, you, you get you can only paint so many Mark VI and Mark VII Space Marines. I apologize for the blurriness. I'm holding the model upside down because uh, I think it's really important to get your angles right. So even though it's kind of making you, the viewer, a, a little bit uh, throwing your <laughs> your whole perception of how I'm working off by holding the model upside down. Um, I really believe that as a painter, I need to do a good job of painting this model and to show you how I would do it. Like normally if I had the camera off, I would turn the model around. I wouldn't, I'm not keeping it right side up as it were, just so that I can get a good shot. I'm showing you how I would paint it and um, I'm, I'm trying to give you the, the most honest paint job that I can do. Known oil, it's time for the washes. And uh, a lot of people, myself included, have had mixed results with the washes from Games Workshop. But um, what I've started doing is adding water or lamian medium, lamian medium, to my known oil. And what that does is it really helps to water it down, thin down that wash so it's not as thick, it doesn't go on as, um, as dark. And when it dries, it doesn't pool as oily. So adding a little bit of water, putting it on your wet palette, adding some water or lamian medium to your washes can really, really help. And what I'm doing is I'm using known oil for everything. Everything across this model is getting this known oil wash. But you could also go back and say, well, maybe I want it to look a little bit dirty as well as uh, dark. So I'm, I'm going to add a little bit of... Uh, a mud effect or, a, or a, a dirt effect by adding some Agrax Earthshade. I wanted to really focus on the shadows and uh, different shades of the grays without adding any browns in there, which is why I'm sticking to known oil. But really, uh, to each his own, washing and choosing the shades is just as important as choosing your base colors because if you apply a shade, it really means that you're going to be playing with the colors and the tones that you used to base coat your model with. As we're uh, coming to the end here, I just want to say thank you for watching this video, for sticking through it. This has been 37 minutes, 37 and a half minute video that uh, I just really enjoyed pumping out. I know it's been a long time since I've made a tutorial. Well, it's been a long time since I've made a video at all, and it's been even I can't even remember when the last time I made a tutorial. So uh, it was great to get behind the camera again. And I just want to encourage you, I know there's some people out there that are um, starting their own YouTube channels and their own uh, Facebook things and posting everywhere. And I just say, just go for it. You know, turn on your camera, turn on your camera phone, uh, your iPhone or your Android or whatever and start filming. And even if it's just to talk about what you're working on, your thoughts about uh, the new edition of 40k coming out, what you painted, or just maybe if you want to rant about something that happened in your life. We're a great community here on YouTube, as you could tell from the comments of any of my videos and uh, any of the videos out there, Itik Beer, um, Jam Jar, like we've got such a supportive community. 
uh, Daniel Sprinkle, a bunch of people always commenting on my videos when working on uh, their own projects. You guys are the best. And uh, thank you for posting to the Google group and for the to the Facebook. I know Doc Eon is always putting out his Monday miniatures videos and I've always got that going in the back. Jamdar's Warhammer uh, Age of Sigmar videos are always playing in my background when I'm working. So uh, we've got the best community in the world and uh, you guys are the greatest. So thank you for supporting me and uh, for sticking through it and watching this tutorial, hopefully the first in many, many more that we're going to be doing again as my channel kicks in to join the madness of 8th edition. If you have any uh, uh, questions, please leave, the, leave them in the comments section below. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter at Warboss Tay, and uh, you can join the Google group I've got going, post your own work and uh, everything you're working on. And uh, thanks again for following me in this video. When we come back for part two, we're going to be getting on into the highlights and I'm going to be showing you again how, how I do my chipping. You might have remembered from my How to Paint a Carcaridon's Terminator, I think that was my last tutorial, that I like to add a really cool almost graphic novel style chipping effect which is a just a visual illusion of doing scratches and dents in the armor so I hope you stay tuned for that as we uh, finish up our our tubers the red wake and um, our project Carcaridons total I've got some uh, great stuff Leviathan siege dread from Forge world that unboxing and all the unboxings of its weapons is coming out and uh, I'm really excited to to get on with it so hey thanks again for watching you guys and I hope you have a great day, a great night. There's never been a better time to paint miniatures. So uh, hit, hit, um, just hit next on your playlist. Find the next video that uh, can get you through your painting session. All the best, and uh, I salute you all. Good night.